another part of my inverter installation is the inverter needs to have a catastrophe fuse, which is a great big 300 amp time delay fuse. And then also I'm going to install a Victron BMV712 amp hour meter. So I've made some more little spacer blocks. Same as what the inverter's resting on. Piece of pine with a small thin piece of plywood underneath. And it's going to build a platform over the top of this propane line. And then once I get that platform situated, then I've got a nice big area to mount my fuse and my shunt. This area here is where the oven was, the oven and stove. I pulled that out. After a lot of careful measuring, I determined that the inverter would fit under there. I don't have a lot of clearance between the bottom of the oven and this surface of the inverter, so I'll probably switch over to a 17-inch range oven unit. That's the transfer switch that selects between shore power and generator power. That was originally mounted right over here with the wires exiting out that way. So I've relocated that and then I've also built up a little bit of a wooden platform for the inverter to rest on, primarily to get it above this propane line. So right now I have probably a half an inch of clearance between the bottom of the inverter and that propane line which I don't really feel comfortable with because this inverter does get kind of warm when it's uh, primarily when it's in charging mode. So what I'm going to do next is take another piece of this thin plywood and bolt it down here and span the distance from here over to this other piece of wood that I've added. That will basically give a wood shield between that propane line and the bottom of the inverter. Here is my fuse. I have already worked on the battery cables. This is how everything was originally connected from the factory. I've got power cables for the generator that go to the battery bank, power cables for the RV electrical system, and then a set of solar wires. Actually, there's two sets of solar wires. One for back here, there's an exterior solar connection port for ground-mounted portable panels and then also have some roof mounted solar panel just a small trickle charge so I pulled out all of the sealant exposing the grommets so when it's daylight out I can actually disconnect everything and pull most of these cables through and connect them where I need to kind of an involved process I've been working on laying out all these wood spacers and whatnot and this here's another platform I've built up to cover up a bunch of wiring and plumbing down there. There's actually a, a wide gap. You can see that over here as sort of a plumbing and wiring chase. So I've covered that up. That's given me the place to mount my shunt and my fuse block. And what I would recommend doing before bolting anything down is get everything laid out, all your cables routed and connected and whatnot not necessarily connected to the battery but just connected to where everything else will go and then just see how everything fits and how the cables are routed and whatnot and then once you've dialed everything in with cable lengths and wire routing and whatnot then you can start bolting stuff down and finalizing the installation process so that's kind of what I have started working on right now I just finished up my inverter positive cable which will connect right there. I got my shield built for the propane line. It's just a big piece of 3 8 inch plywood. I've cut a little bit of a notch out here for the propane line. And I need to run a new propane line from the back side of this. Once I do that, I will seal up everything here. This is a little cover that prevents any kind of a propane leak from the T's and the junctions underneath this cover from leaking into the interior of the camper. There's a small cover on the outside too, so any propane leakage will go out through the bottom as long as these are all sealed up. So we'll get that to that later.
new battery tray is in place. It's a piece of 3 8 plywood and I've got some 2x4 lumber that I ripped down to 1 inches wide and then I have some footman loops screwed to the top. That's where I'll put my battery straps to hold the batteries in place. It doesn't seem to matter how much pre-planning I do, I still end up changing things around and reorganizing things. I moved the shunt. I had it up here where this yellow work light is, and I had it situated 90 degrees from what it is right now. And then I moved my fuse up into this area. The end of it would have been right right about where this cable is. Well, I changed that again and have built a little tray for my batteries and realized that there's a lot of space next to the batteries where I could put my fuse. So the fuse is going to get relocated outside and then I think I'll put my shunt right back where it originally was, right over here. The shunt is a bit of a nuisance to locate as far as mounting it in a position where everything is routed off of it and on the correct side. So this is the load side of the shunt. This is the battery side of the shunt. This side connects to my inverter, but then I also have a bunch of other negative cables that need to connect to that. And then this, the only thing you want connected to the battery side of the shunt is the battery. Well, the reason I had it up there and rotated 90 degrees was so my, let's see, it would have been the battery side of the shunt was up here and then the load side of the shunt was right here. And then my line of thinking was that all of my negative cables could come in this direction from all of my other uh, connections, my other cables, and then the inverter cable would come over from this side. That all worked, but then it gave me very limited space to mount my fuse with the existing battery cables that I had. So I decided to move the shunt down here and then use a secondary cable right here, this one, to go back there to a big junction block. It's just a great big stud. Well, now that I've relocated my fuse. I'll go ahead and put the shunt back where it was. That'll clean up all of this and get it all the way towards the back and out of the way. This is a really slow going project because there's so many different things that I'm doing in addition to installing the inverter. The oven came out to make room for the inverter. I actually have the inverter mounted now and my DC cables are routed. These two here are the generator start cables. They're just coiled up. I need to hook those to the battery. I've got my shunt in place. Transfer switch, I need to reroute the wires from that to the inverter, or at least one of the wires. So this wire here, well, that'll go to the AC output. And then another wire goes from the transfer switch over here. Another part of the project, is to relocate a cheesy little fuse block. Actually, I removed it and I installed that new one. This took a better part of it an evening to route the wiring, create the battery cables, and then I got everything installed and realized I couldn't fit the cover on my fuse holder because of however how I had everything routed. So I spun the fuse holder 90 degrees last night and left it at that and then it was getting late so I gave up. So tonight I'm going to finish that up and then uh, let's see this cable here is for my new USB ports which are located right there. That's the wire anyway I don't have the USB ports mounted yet. And then I also have a smart dongle for the inverter. It's a Bluetooth dongle, a communications device. That needs to pick up power from that new fuse holder. And so does my, uh, let's see, the Color Control GX remote panel for the inverter. And then also I've got 
BMV 712 back there. So part of all of that mounting project, as you can see, I ripped out that piece of cabinet work. I salvaged it. I just cut that paneling right down there. You can see right where the cut is. So I salvaged that to keep it. So if I ever decide to sell the camper, I can put it back to stock. And I'm going to cut a new piece of paneling and get a somewhat close match to this stain color and then mount everything in that. And hopefully tonight I'll have most of this mess cleaned up. I'm also redoing all of the cables, not necessarily the ends, but at least I'm getting rid of this nasty electrical tape and putting on some nice heat shrink tubing.